Greetings fellow princeps and moderati. Welcome to this mini-series on how to bring your god engines, in all its splendorous glory, to the table. Today we'll start with a wolf class warhound scout titan like you see him here with the metal skeleton underneath the armor panels with metal dry brushing and pigment magic to go further in the next videos with the armor panels, battle damage and special effects like light glowing off the plasma guns, lens effects and stuff like this. So let us start with the miniature. As you can see here we start with a just black primed Warhound Scout Titan and the weapons are only magnetized for sure. If you want to know how to do this there is another video upcoming with content to building and magnetizing your titans. Starting with the metal structure I go with a heavy dry brush with a dark metal tone, a true metallic metal color, in this case Iron Warrior by Citadel and I apply it with a large dry brush roughly over all these skeleton bits where it needs to be metal later. In my opinion dry brushing is the best way on such scaled miniatures due to the rough appearance of the color when you dry brush it on. If you want to go more of a loyalist shiny god engine you can brush on this metal color with a regular layer technique. When everything is done and all the metal parts are prepared we go on with the first step of highlights with lead belcher. This one is a tiny amount of brownish tint if you want to go more to a clear silver you can pick iron hand steel or equal colors. Lead belcher will be dry brushed from above in downward strokes everywhere where the light would hit the miniature. So you can leave these metal skeleton areas underneath armor panels clear so that you can get the feeling of uh, shadow building underneath these armor panels that will be glued on later. Don't forget these nose and ear parts on the head and on the flank there are parts that don't need to be dry brushed due to the armor panel but there are some little edges showing through so apply the color there. If you may ask, hey Dizzy, why did you glue the head before painting the armor panels? I like to go this way on the Warhound Titans for a more dynamic feel while building the miniature and I will get some more inside knowledge of this in the upcoming how to build video. After all these edges are dry brushed I apply some Balthasar gold, a reddish gold color on elements like these pistons and on these small aquilas on top of the shoulders and these small armor trims that are all so there and you can pick out other elements like like hot air exhausts or cables or tubes on larger machines this warhound scout titan does not get that many details to be picked out here just simply apply the color where you want these different colored textures to appear on your god engine and after that there will be some oxide on all these goldish parts because I don't think there are truly gold, there are more of a bronze brassy appearance. So I take this technical color Nihilac Oxide and apply it on the golden parts and on some of the pistons. Apply the color, just clean your brush and go over the surfaces again with a bit of a damp brush so you can smooth the transition and uh, get rid of the color that spilled over to the silver bits. Leave the oxide to dry and then 
there is some magic that will happen. Because now I grab pigment powder. There you can see it on my small palette. This is powder by Vallejo Pigments. There are several other manufacturers that provide you with those. In my case I got Burned Umber and Burned Sierra. I start with the pigment powder on my palette, just dampen it with water to a fine consistency like a glaze and apply this pigment powder with a rough old brush on the miniature where you think there needs some some rust and some weathered look. Here it is uh, your liking that uh, limited you by applying this color. You can just go only in the recesses for some rust or you can go all over the miniature just like you uh, think your god engine should look. Engine or repair clean if he stood on duty for about a month or even years on a wet world where everything is rusted up or if it's just a traitor machine encrusted by thousands of years in the warp and rust and all these warp shenanigans. If there are too many pigments on an area then just wash out your brush, get it wet a bit and remove the pigments or play around cause you can push the pigments around on the miniature. After I got this step all around, I go around with another run with even more pigments in the recesses and on all uh, the skeleton panels that are underneath the body or uh, behind the legs. Cause with this pigment step you can also fake some shadowy areas where there is more of these rusted texture instead of a real shadow. After this coat of pigments is applied and fully dry, there is the tricky part with the other colored pigments with the burnt sierra for more of a rusted appearance, the, the hard encrusted rust. There you can apply it the same way, just get your pigment powder wet and apply it, but the damp brush will re-wet the pigments that already been applied so you don't get a clear picture on how it would look right away. There is just a bit of practice that you might need but I think on the second or even the third god engine you would be really good with this technique and can figure out how it would look in the end. So just apply the burnt sierra pigments on all the places where you think the rust should be more encrusted and uh, after that take several hours to let it dry or grab a blow dryer to get it bone dry for the next step. This is some kind of a inverted dry brushing or highlighting cause I remove the pigments from the edges with a bone dry dry brush. I stroke from above with downward strokes over all the areas where I think the light would hit and remove the pigments that had dried on all the edges as you can see here. So it's kind of an inverted dry brush because I don't add color, I just remove it. If you got this step done all around the whole miniature, it is your choosing if it's rusted enough for your liking or if you apply just another coat of pigments here and there or if you go the next step as I do and apply some more visual eye candy with some more highlights and the next step of highlighting is in between real highlights for lighten up the miniature and kinda roughen the edges up with the appearance of battle damage. I take a blister sponge and rune fang steel and stipple this on all these little edges where I think would be light and maybe could be battle damage while walking through a cityscape and scratching around the buildings and uh, wearing off these rust that had 
settled on these areas. So stipple all around the miniature here and there to get the appearance you like. You can go really light with this effect to get a more darken overall visual or you can go very heavy to brighten up the miniature really really much. Depends on your taste and on your finished titan if it should be a traitor one or a loyal one. And with this step all these metal pieces are done so far. There are only some cables and stuff to be painted on the miniature and uh, as you made might have seen in the beginning and if you see later there are these armor panels on the head and the legs that I repainted with black for a better visual. The cables on this Warhound Scout Titan are a very simple affair. This is a three a color highlighting. The base tone is ashen gray just applied on all of these cables. The next step is dawn stone just for a bit of rough highlighting and uh, the final highlight is administratum gray with some small dots and lines here and there i don't think these highlights need to be that sharp because we just get the illusion of a 13 meter high engine of war in roughly three inches model height so we don't need to get the highlight that crisp and ruin the illusion of a big engine of war after all this is done i glued on the armor panels with some super glue so you can better reference the model in its whole appearance for the turntable and we're done so far if you liked the tutorial, just leave a comment and a thumbs up and I will get to you when I paint the armor panels for Legio Ignatum. If you want to support me, or better to say us from Team Titanicorn further, just visit Patreon slash Team Titanicorn and leave some donation there to support us in providing Adeptus Titanicus content like tutorials, brief overview of a Titan classes, weapons, the Legios, the Maniple or the main focus bring you Adeptus Titanicus battle reports in English in all its full gameplay glory. So Thank you for watching this video. If you apply this tutorial on your miniatures, let me know your results and we see you in the next one. Till then, keep on wargaming!